how many of you believe that whatever happens in the cosmos has absolutely no effect on the earth? How is it the sun lights up the earth and lights up the moon so that the moon glows and lights up the dark side of the earth? The moon has a low albedo, meaning the surface is not supposed to reflect light that well, but it does. And the earth shine, the light reflecting off of the surface of the earth, also contributes to the glow of the moon. You think that is by accident? You think our biology being connected to the moon is by accident? You think the moon sitting up there always showing one side, constantly readjusting itself to do so, is because of nature? You mean to tell me that the moon perfectly covering the sun in an eclipse is by happenstance? Now everybody knows, well I hope everybody knows that if something were to happen to the sun or the moon, it will will affect the earth directly. We all understand the relationship between the sun, earth, and moon. From a theological position, we would say that was purposed by God and what we consider to be other planets within our solar system are also purposed. We do know how Jupiter is important for maintaining the asteroid belt. How is that an accident? Some of the planets may play a bigger role than others. The point is, if this system is purposed or designed, what would be the purpose of a black hole? What would be the purpose of a magnetar? As human beings are being blamed for the changing of a climate that has always been changing since the beginning of time, who's to blame for cosmic change? It's so funny. You're going to find so many Snopes versions of fact-checking on this. <laughs> and they're just lies. So can anyone explain to me how we are supposed to cut carbon emissions? I want you guys to take a look at something. Now keep in mind, I am not a mathematician. Cars, planes, trains. Where do CO2 emissions from transport come from they come from cars planes trains what kind of a crazy question is that anyway by Hannah Ritchie so let's give Hannah the benefit of a doubt and say just for the sake of argument say that everything the information in this article is spot-on it's accurate but before I get into this I want you guys to think of why of all greenhouse gases are they choosing the one that humans biologically produce by breathing? We'll get to that in a moment. Transport accounts for around one-fifth of global carbon dioxide emissions. 24% if we only consider CO2 emissions from energy. You see, they're not including the emissions, let's say, that come from volcanoes. How do these emissions break down? Is it cars, trucks, planes, or trains that dominate? In the chart here, we see global transport emissions in 2018. This data is sourced from the International Energy Agency. Road travel accounts for three quarters of transport emissions. Most of this comes from passenger vehicles, cars and buses, which contribute 45.1%. The other 29.4% comes from trucks carrying freight. Since the entire transport sector accounts for 21% of total emissions and road transport accounts for three quarters of transport emissions, 
Road transport accounts for 15% total CO2 emissions from energy. Aviation, while it often gets the most attention in discussions on action against climate change, which is true, and that's where they're going to start to implement these policies, accounts for only 11.6% of transport emissions. It emits just under 1 billion tons of CO2 each year, around 2.5% of total global emissions. International shipping contributes a similar amount at 10.6%. Rail travel and freight emits very little, only 1% of transport emissions. Other transport, which is mainly the movement of materials such as water, oil, and gas via pipelines, is responsible for 2.2%. Now they say that a human being exhales 2.3 to 2.5 pounds of carbon dioxide each day. 365 days a year, that is... 839.5 pounds a year. Multiply that by 7 billion at the low end and you get 5.8 trillion pounds which is 2.2 billion metric tons. Now that's a considerable amount given the numbers I've just read to you for CO2 emissions from transport and energy. Should we stop breathing? No, because as we breathe out, that CO2 is being processed, filtered out, and converted. So how much of all of this emitted CO2 is neutralized or processed? And they fail to tell us this because they want you to believe that this is causing the earth to change the way it has been. They are lying to everyone to cover the truth. It's just that simple. And the truth is, the climate is changing because the cosmos is changing. And they've been telling everyone this through the press releases of star explosions, the news about black holes, neutron stars, magnetars, asteroid flybys. You see the bigger picture once you put all that stuff together. Radiation, cosmic radiation, as well as radiation from the sun is hitting our magnetosphere and it is being redirected into the poles of the earth. The earth is not releasing all of that energy. And so over time, that energy builds up internally. Magma in the earth's crust starts to flow faster and stronger, creating more current and heating up the soil. Some of that radiation that gets redirected into the poles doesn't get redirected, just gets directed at us. This causes the atmosphere to do several things. For example, compress and heat up. The volcanism on the surface and in the ocean contribute to that. Oh yeah, big surprise that the hottest month on record was last month. And they keep saying like it's the hottest month on record of the century. This happens every year and has been happening for years. Now after they get enough people to get on board and go along with us being the cause of all this, what do you think they are going to do next? Tax the air we breathe. They are trying. Some locations have tried to do this indirectly, like the Venezuelan government, their airlines that wanted to tax people for air purification. And this is how it will start off. They will indirectly tax our air by saying that it is for the cost of purification under the guise of health and safety for all. That's how they got you guys wearing masks and getting shots. That's how they get you guys drifting into the wrong lane. What are you guys going to do next year when it gets hotter? Or this winter when it's 30 degrees and snowing one day and 80 degrees the next day? The cosmic changes that have been occurring are extraordinary. There is a considerable amount happening, and the ash environment is coming. It's here already for some people. Some of you who live out west near or in California know what I'm talking about. All that heat that was out west is moving towards the central U.S. And places like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, Nebraska, those places are heating up. 
Expect temperatures above 100 degrees in those areas all next week. In an upcoming presentation, I want to talk about neutrinos and how the detection of neutrinos has increased and what all that means because it is a bit complex to get into right now. This is linked to what is happening right now. Believe it, they are going to try and punish us for this. They are going to try and tax us for this. They don't have direct evidence, just theories of lackey scientists. And they will keep pretending like this is just happening and they will keep saying in 10 to 20 years and 50 years, we could be in trouble. No, we are in trouble now. Guys, you don't know how carefully and methodically planned all of this has been for years. Do you know what they have been doing? They have been doing things to make it seem as though all these earth changes are less than what they really are. They have been spraying the skies partly to mitigate the effects of cosmic and solar radiation. Think about GMO foods. Most people think they make GMO foods for the purpose of pest control. Faster growth, larger yield, less expensive, all those reasons, right? What about making GMO foods that are resistant to the earth changes? That way, when these changes start to affect crops and food supply, it won't be as bad. Look at this. This comes from PRI.org. Scientists think GMO crops may help us deal with climate change. Mind you, this was published back in 2016. So how far have they come with this today? I'm not sure. But listen to this. Engineered resistance. One crop genetically engineered for drought tolerance is already on the market in the United States. A corn variety called Drought Guard, created by Evil. Approved by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in 2011, Drought Guard includes a protein from the bacterium Bacillus subtilis that evil says will help the corn remain productive amid water shortages. Drought Guard has also been certified for sale in several other countries, including Australia, Canada, Mexico, and Japan. The market response to Drought Guard has been slow so far. In 2014, about 500,000 acres were planted with Drought Guard corn representing about 0.5% of the nation's corn crop. Did you guys know that? Probably not. And the results have been mixed. Another crop at the forefront of this new arena of GMO research is soybeans. Look, do I need to read anymore? You've been lied to. You've been duped, tricked, fooled, bamboozled. I mean, don't you guys get tired of living like this, knowing that we are all living under the rule of evil and are being lied to 24-7, not sometimes, all the time. I bring these things to your attention. Why? Because it's what you need to know. There is more to come, so stay tuned. For those of you interested, please be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. There are affiliate-sponsored products that you can check out on the website as well. I will continue to try and present these types of findings to you guys as much as possible and as carefully as possible. Until next time, my friends, God bless. Stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.